For years now, we've called out Blizzard for pandering to China. They've censored their games, banned players, and even designed games around the region, and now there's doom in paradise for them because almost all of their games are being pulled from the region since the 14 years of working with NetEase is coming to an end. I have a lot of things to show off, but before we get into the topic at hand, if you enjoy the content that I create, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. Follow me on social media like Twitter or mine so that you can see when my content is posted. And of course, if you do really enjoy the videos and the live streams that I create, please consider becoming a Dark Titan via Patreon for just a dollar a month or support the channel via YouTube memberships. All of the links are in the description, and of course, I do really appreciate all of the support. So, as this article says, Blizzard announces exit from China, suspension of nearly all game services there. I really couldn't believe when this broke, when this story was posted online, because Blizzard has done so much for China. I mean, like I said, they've censored games and even designed games around the region so that they wouldn't have to censor them as much and it would be easier to get their games into China. But unfortunately for them, NetEase isn't working with them anymore. It says Blizzard Entertainment, part of Activision Blizzard, announced that it will be suspending most Blizzard game services in mainland China due to the expiration of the current licensing agreements with NetEase and the termination of live services is set for January 23rd, 2023. Blizzard has partnered with the Chinese company since 2008 on the publication and management of its games in the nation. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but to get games into this region, you have to partner with a Chinese publisher. You have to go through their censorship processes, and then your game has to be accepted. And we have heard that it takes a long time to actually get accepted by a publisher and to censor your game the way that they want it, and then be able to actually release it. But of course, Blizzard has really been focused on this region. They have done a lot for the, you know, Chinese censors, and now it's backfiring for them. It says partnerships like this are common in the gaming industry, right? Games, for example, had a very similar agreement with the Chinese gaming company Tencent to help it distribute League of Legends there before Tencent went on to acquire Riot in 2015. According to Blizzard, though, when the current agreement expires, again in January, nearly every live game it operates will be going offline. It says World of Warcraft, Hearthstone, Warcraft 3 Reforged, Overwatch, Starcraft, Diablo 3, Heroes of the Storm, and the only exception will be Diablo Immortal, which we know they made in partnership with NetEase. It's under a separate agreement, so they're not going to remove Diablo Immortal, but they're removing all of these other Blizzard games. Now, it's a little bit odd that this is happening, primarily because Microsoft is acquiring Activision Blizzard, and none of the Activision Blizzard games are being pulled to, like, Call of Duty, even though there's a different version of, like, Call of Duty in China. Um, those games are not being pulled, so we don't know how this is going to happen, but you think that Microsoft would be able to pull some strings to keep this deal together for now, but that you know, deal with Microsoft and Activision Blizzard um, hasn't fully gone through yet. Microsoft hasn't officially acquired Activision Blizzard. So maybe in a couple of months when that happens, they'll pull some strings and they'll be able to make some deals. The article doesn't really specify what they couldn't come to terms with. One would hope it's because Blizzard doesn't want to continue to bend the knee to CCP censorship, but I highly doubt that's what it was, and it probably just comes down to money and agreeing on how much of a cut goes to NetEase and how much of the content they control. So in the end, the disagreement is most likely just about money, and when they get back into the Chinese market, they'll probably just continue to go on as they always have. But right now, this is looking like a giant disaster for Blizzard. They do make a lot of money out of this region. And again, World of Warcraft, Hearthstone, Overwatch, all games that do, you know, really 
heavily rely on China for at least their esports scene. If we look at Overwatch, um, I believe it's a fifth of the professional teams do come from the Chinese region. So we don't know how this is going to affect even the esports side of, you know, their dealings with China. But this is very bad news for Blizzard. And this is a prime example of why they shouldn't have pandered to China in the first place. We have been calling them out for years at this point for doing that, but I mean, look at this article from back in 2019. Poll suggests Blizzard employees support punishment of Hearthstone player Blitzchung and censorship on behalf of the Chinese government. It is pretty well known at this point that... You know, Blizzard does their very best for China, um, but even their employees supported these moves because, I mean, at the end of the day, they just want to keep their jobs. So if they have to censor a couple of things in games, they are more than willing to do that. Let's also not forget all of the controversies that Blizzard has faced over the past few years, starting with this one. Activision Blizzard faces multiple lawsuits as current female employees allege harassment, retaliation, and intentional infliction of emotional distress. And I did talk about the situation when it initially happened, but this was a major problem for Blizzard this year. It says the latest lawsuit asserts that immediately after the employee's hiring, Blizzard subjected her to harassment and gender discrimination, beginning with an initiation lunch where at leadership pressured her to drink many shots of tequila. And after this lunch, a uh, former IT director forced his hand on her lap. After lunch, they all headed to another place for more drinks and leadership pressured her to drink even more. This was only one of the situations. Then she claimed that she was subjected to further occurrences of harassment, including receiving an email from a fellow female executive assistant featuring a reference to hooks and blow being coerced into participating in the previously alleged cube crawls undertaken seemingly exclusively to harass women. These are very serious accusations, but at the same time, they seem a little inflated and lacking of evidence. So sure, maybe a version of these things happened, but we'll never know. And then, uh, more recently, we found out that Activision Blizzard's financial results for quarter of 2022 showed a drop in nearly every year-on-year -year metric, revenue down 28%. So things are not looking good for Blizzard right now. I do think that Microsoft will swoop in and clean things up and just manage these people better, but it hasn't happened yet and Blizzard's deals are now falling through. I have no love for a lot of the things Blizzard has done, especially with microtransactions they've thrown into games like Diablo Immortal. Occasionally, they listen to consumers like releasing Diablo 2 Resurrected and fixing it, but let's be honest, Activision Blizzard is still a microtransaction hungry corporation. It sucks, and I really don't see them changing under Microsoft. Look, ultimately, I don't think that Blizzard will be in trouble. No, the acquisition isn't completed, but I'm confident that it will be, so they will have Microsoft's money behind them. But this still is bad news because I'm sure this was a high percentage of their income that's now gone. But that's all that I really had to discuss in this video. Let everyone know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to give it a like, share it, and subscribe to the channel. And of course, if you didn't, make sure to give it a dislike. I appreciate your support either way, but I will talk to you all again in the next video really soon.